Hello and welcome to Connect and Collaborate. I'm Alex Hopkins, your on-air producer, and I am so excited for this week because we have Anthony Lombados, owner of Footers Catering, with us all week long. We're talking about hospitality, which is a huge industry in Colorado, particularly in the Denver metro area. So, Anthony, um, this is kicking off our week long with you of uh, fantastic guests. <laughs> I'm excited. This is uh, obviously to, sh to shine a spotlight on our industry is something that, that's near and dear to my heart. And, um, and I'm excited for the week because we're going to get to profile some different segments of the industry. You know, hospitality spans um, everything from, you know, beverage production to restaurants to hotels to events. And um, there's so many dynamics. And so I think it's going to be a lot of fun this week to uh, to dive into those different areas and, uh, and, and highlight them for the, the Colorado Business Roundtable community. Thank you. That is appreciated. It, it is one of our many industries that we touch upon for the Colorado Business Roundtable. And so um, let's just get caught up a little bit here with what Footers has going on because it's been a month since we've seen you. That's right. So uh, welcome back. Yeah, it's always great to be here. Uh, this is a, a fun time of year for us. There's a, a lot of energy as we bring uh, bring new team members on. Uh, we're gearing up for what we call our our wedding season. It's it's much more than weddings. That's a that's a part <laughs> of what we do. But um, you know, most of our weddings take place from May to September, um, and so this is a, a busy time of year where um, you know we'll probably do 175 weddings over the course of, of those uh, that span of time. Um, that's a, about how many I get invited to a year. <laughs> <laughs> 75 weddings. It's a lot of bridesmaid stresses. I'll tell you that. <laughs> Busy girl. Uh, but uh, but yeah. So it's a. Uh, it, it, we go through this January, February, March, which tends to be a little bit slower for us. And, and as we ramp up, uh, you can just feel the energy and the buzz in our team um, getting excited about, about all those events. So, um, so it's a definitely a good time to, to be at Footers and, and exciting. Awesome. So, are you hiring right now? Oh yes, we uh, we are definitely hiring for for the uh, for the season. Um, people looking for part time work and uh, events on the weekends and nights that that we have. Uh, we're we're looking to staff up also uh, on our culinary side um, too. We're hiring in our kitchen. Fantastic. That is awesome to hear. Well, let's. Um, I do have to mention one thing that Cobert has going on. We're very excited for this. May 10th, we are hosting a cybersecurity event with CSU Global, and you can find that event at cobrt.com slash events. Cybersecurity is huge right now. Don't know how much it touches on the hospitality <laughs> sector, but I did have to mention that for CSU Global and get people involved with that event. Um, but let's jump in. Who is your guest today? Oh, we, we have uh, one of my favorite, favorite people in the industry. Uh, but, you know, when it comes to, to restaurants and, and restaurateurs, uh, Denver has, in my opinion, really grown up over the past 10 years. Um, and our restaurant scene is just booming with awesome, awesome things that are going on. Um, and I've known Juan Padro for... Gosh, I think uh, over 10 years, uh, when you when you first opened Highland Tap and Burger, um, we had a chance to, to sit down, and I was immediately impressed by what he was doing. And, and I to cold see. called him. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we need to get butts and seats. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we came down there. I was with a, uh, with a group, and uh, and we were just really impressed with, with what he was building and, and the buzz that was starting to to, to come around uh, that, that space that you were in and, and the neighborhood. Uh, I mean, you yeah. were really one of the first – people to to really be in that area which is cool um and then to see what you've been able to do with the the expansion and you know opening Sloan's Tap and then Bardo and uh, Senior Bear I mean all restaurants that people are very familiar with here in Denver and that are getting a ton of well-deserved publicity so Juan pleasure to have you here thank you for for being the guest today thanks for having me I appreciate it uh so uh, I want to just jump in and and you know, we've chatted a number of times, so why don't you tell, so tell the listeners why you chose to get in the restaurant business? Uh, I think it chose me, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm not a restaurant guy by trade. I worked in restaurants, uh, you know, in high school and college. Uh, and uh, when I finished, uh, I have a history degree, and my first job was in mutual fund accounting. <laughs> So, so none of that relates, really. Well, no, not at all. So, uh, and I'm from Massachusetts, and... and um, and uh, then I became a, a headhunter in technology in the dot-com era, uh, which is pretty similar to what's going on in Denver, kind of across the board. Um, you know, there's just pets.com and shoes.com, you name it, and everybody 
became a headhunter because that's where you went to make money and you know and uh it was tough to find people and um you know and ended up being a little bit of a bubble and and uh you see a little bit of that in what's going on in uh in colorado too it's just so busy and growing so fast so um and then uh, i was transferred out to denver in 1999 to open up an office and uh i lived here till uh, till 2003 moved back to boston and then in 2009 i got a call from a friend of mine uh, who owned a lounge in denver saying hey we're gonna go into the highlands neighborhood and uh, we're going to open up a neighborhood bar. Do you want to invest? <laughs> and I was like, you know, I hadn't been, been back in a few years. I was like, you're going where and opening up what? <laughs> uh-huh. And uh, so he said, hey, I'll buy you a plane ticket. Come on out. So I came out um, and uh, started walking around the neighborhood. And, and at, you know, Lola was there. Uh-huh. Uh, Masterpiece was there. Um, Duo was there. Um, a couple other, other spots. But in general, you know, it was very uh, transitioning. Um, and, uh, but you know, you could see, um, things happening, people investing money in the neighborhoods, the lawn, you know, every other lawn was being manicured and things like that. And so decided to invest, uh, a small amount, which, uh, and when we figured out what was going on in the neighborhood, there was no place to get burgers. There was no place to get craft beer. And I was like, all I read about was Colorado being the Napa Valley of beer. (laughs) And I was like, there's no place to get beer in this neighborhood, craft beer at least. So I was like, we should probably change what we're thinking of. And I made that pitch to the guys that were opening the place, the operators at the time. And uh, they agreed, but it was going to cost way more money. (laughs) So uh, we doubled, tripled, quadrupled down and threw a bunch more money in and said, hey, you know what, if we're going to put this much money in, we're going to move out to Colorado and we're going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to be operators and uh, we're going to give up what we're doing. And, you know, Katie, uh, she was an investment banker for 10 years, never worked in a restaurant in her life. And, um, and, uh, and I came out and ironically, even though they were bar guys and lounge guys, nobody had worked in a restaurant but me. <laughs> As a server and a bartender. Uh-huh. So, uh, long story that's how I ended up in the business because naturally I was the least risky person to run it. <laughs> so, um, so we started Highland Tap, and uh, as you know, it's grown and it's been uh, it's been a popular place for a number of years, and uh, it's, it's important for that community. And and uh, uh, our second restaurant was Old Major, uh, and that was 2012. Right. Uh, we owned that for two years, and uh, then we uh, sold out of Old Major, uh, opened up Bardo. Mm-hmm. then Sloan's Tap and Burger, and uh, then Senor Bear. And we have three more restaurants opening in the next four months. Can we get an inside peek at those? <laughs> okay, I'm going to share this with you. All three. And I'll just so you know, yes, the public only knows about two. Oh, I'm very excited then. So, um, so uh, we have uh, Morin. Uh, we, we bought the Wazi Supper Club, which is the oldest restaurant in uh, Lodo. Yeah. Uh, we bought. Uh, we got the partner on the real estate with uh, Charlie Woolley, who's uh, you know just kind of a real estate icon in in, uh, in Denver, and he's a preservationist, and that's something that's close to my heart. Um, being from New England, I love. Uh, preserving old buildings and you know uh-huh. I grew up in a house built in 1836 that's cool. um, so uh, that was important and we've been trying to do business together for quite a while uh, that's where Bardot originally was going to go okay yeah in that spot <laughs> right Interesting. and uh, but uh, we just couldn't come to a deal at that point in time uh, but uh, but anyways we, we, we did this time and uh, Morin is uh, my partner Max McKissick's family name he's French uh, and, uh, and, and this is cooking that's near and dear to his heart with his technique and, uh, and, and, and sort of modern interpretation of the food. So it's modern French bistronomy is what you would call that. Um, and we are, uh, we've got, th- this is like an all-star team and our hope is that, um, that we're able to uh, bring some, some more national attention to the Denver dining scene. It's getting some, but, um, it still needs more credibility with like, you know, really technique driven, mm-hmm. uh, kitchens and, 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 uh, Max is really the only guy in my opinion in the city that can pull this particular concept off. And, um, so we have, uh, Michael Serratini who came over to us from the tag group. He was their, uh, operations guy and he's our operations guy now. And, uh, we have, uh, Marianne McLean, uh, who owned Rhino Yacht Club and, uh, the proper poor in the source. Um, and, uh, Mary worked for me at old major when they moved to town. Uh, McLean's 
you know, I hate to throw something out like the best bartender I've ever seen in my life, but he's certainly one of them. Uh, his Always good to have that on your side. Yeah. His cocktails are amazing. Um, but Mary's, uh, you know, her hospitality is great. And she's an expert in natural wines. And that's a big thing in France right now. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all about the natural wines. And we're going to have a, you know, our program is going to be largely natural, natural wines. That's cool. And, uh, yeah, so that's awesome. So, uh, so that's more in. And then we have a tap at Bellevue and I-25 opening. Nice. So we're getting out of the, you know, the downtown. Into yeah. the tech center. Into the tech center. And to, we're going to grow tap. So that's something that we think is important. We mm -hmm. think it's a really cool um, a business model. And uh, we can talk more about that later. But um, And then uh, we, we just took over the Bremen space, which is next to Senor Bear. Um, and uh, we're going to do a, uh, a really cool sort of North African Israeli uh, uh, wow. Mediterranean style yeah. uh, concept there. And um, so. So that's uh, the new one. Yeah. So I can't throw all the partners out there yet, but you're the first to hear about it. Man, you, you just don't cease to uh, to stop. And I love that. Yeah. You know, I think a couple of things you, you touched on, which are fascinating to me. You know, you talked about growing up working in the, in the industry. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, as we highlight hospitality this week, one of the stats that I came across is that 50% of all people have worked in the restaurant industry at some point in their life. And I think that that's a, I, I think the number should be 100% because I, I think when, when people work in hospitality, they just have a little bit more understanding of what goes on. But exactly. in general, when you think about 50% of the population working in one industry at some point in time, that's a really unique thing that I don't think anyone else can really talk about. Right. Um, yeah. I mean, it's certainly empathy is like a really important thing in life. Yeah. And I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> if you don't have empathy in hospitality, then, then you're going to fail. So um, I think, you know, or, you know, you're going to have a lot of work to do as a human being. <laughs> so, <laughs> being around yeah. people. Right. Tell, you know, you feel obviously bullish on the, the restaurant industry. You uh -huh. know, the ambitious plan you have opening three new restaurants, you know, expanding tap. You know, overall, what are, you, what are your perceptions of what's going on in the Colorado restaurant um, industry? It's growing really fast. And, you know, I alluded to a little bit earlier, um, you know, to the dot-com era. Uh, mm -hmm. I think there's some of that going on. Yeah. Um, because... You know, the state in general, people are flush with cash. I mean, people have made a lot of money in real estate. You know, I mean, if you owned a home in, in North Denver, you know, it, before 2012, uh, and you still own it, you're likely a millionaire. Um, so, you know, <laughs> yeah. and um, or so, you know, people have a lot of cash and they're like, what do we do with it? We want to invest in cool things. And, um, and then you have the younger generation that I think is really experiential, um, you know, um, and uh, so people are like, hey, you know, if you have a cool idea, let's invest in it and let's let's see where it can go. Uh, I think that's super dangerous. Um, <laughs> I think, I think, like I said, I think we saw that when when uh, when the Pets.com world, you know, people were getting forty, fifty million bucks, and 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 you when when I was a headhunter, we were recruiting kids out of college. Don't even finish your college degree, you can get eighty, ninety thousand bucks right now. Yeah, and uh, so so then what happens is the the barrier of entry in the industry gets lowered because you need people you've got to you know so right. um so we're seeing some of that and uh we're, we're seeing a lot of people who are uh, looking at colorado from the outside looking in and seeing the labor statistics and seeing the growth and saying hey you know we're going to go open a restaurant in this market and some of them are very established restaurateurs and very good and big names and, and they're falling on their face and uh because they don't understand uh, the labor market here uh -huh. um, and uh, they don't have the relationships in place and they're not aligning with the right people. So um, I think for it to grow, um, we're going to have to go through, um, you know, a little bit of pain here um, and we're starting to see some closings and stuff, but I want to tell you something. What happens there is that, you know, people begin to get sick of that and they don't like it and it doesn't feel good and they want to go to a place where they know that there's growth especially if they're professionals and they want to stay in the industry and i think one of the good things about hospitality is that and i think you know a lot of this is because of the food network and and bravo with their top chef and stuff like that it's right. become a viable career you know in right. a lot of people's eyes it used to be hey what are you going to do when you grow up uh and now you know you could take myself and Katie, for example, you know, I mean, man, coming from management consulting and, and investment banking and, and two restaurants. I mean, you would never have seen that 10 years ago um, and, right. uh, and and making money doing it, you know. So uh, there's a path. 
um, and the best people are starting. You, you're start, already starting to see it. They're starting to go to the best restaurant groups, uh-huh. and the best restaurant groups are continuing to grow. Troy's growing. Jenny Jasinski's growing. Yep. Um, Justin Cucci's growing. Frank uh, Bonanno. Yep. Frank's doing doing his thing, and and um, and and you you know the same thing with you guys in your industry. I mean, there's uh, there's definitely uh, a few tiers of catering companies, <laughs> and, uh, and and people want to work for the best ones. You know, so um, so. That's kind of what's going on. Um, I think as the talent pool gets denser in those particular groups, the restaurants will improve. Yeah. They'll get better and better. The, I, think you, I think you're right on that. Talk a little bit. About, you know, you said this generation wants experiential. Uh, uh-huh. And I think that's one of the things you do really well with your restaurants. Talk about what you think that means when, when somebody comes in wanting an experience. Well, there's two things. Um, and, uh, you know, so one is... Um, the actual in restaurant experience or um whether it's sit down or fast casual or or whatever you know the best in the city the two best in the city at it are justin Cucci and tommy lee you know i mean uncle people want to go in they want to get their ramen they want to just be cool and listen to music and you know eat a bunch of noodles and get out and, you know, it's a the cool spot and he he crushes it and justin creates environments that are super cool and for us we you know our model with with we have two models we have the tap and burger model which is um cause based we'll talk about that in a second Mm -hmm. and then we have uh the bardo we call it conceptual side which is bardo senior bears morins stuff like that which um you know we want people to go in and we're sort of like deconstructing fine dine you know we're putting out beautiful food but Mm -hmm. we're saying you know what we're not gonna have the weight of some sort of book like you know that says that you're you know, have two or three star, like, you know, the, in Europe, it's about the Michelin star uh-huh. restaurants. And, and that's where bistronomy came from because you had these Michelin star chefs that were like, this is way too much pressure on our people. Yeah. And these guys are like, you know, they're, they're ending up in a doctor's office because, uh, because of a book saying there are one or two or a three star, mm-hmm. you know, and there's that expectation, you know, we don't want to do that. Um, we're going to open up a cool hip restaurant with no white tablecloth and we're going to play the music we want to play and we're going to put out the food we want to put out and we're going to do an awesome job at it. Yeah. And we're going to give you equally as good service and we're going to give you equally as good food um, and uh, and we're just going to deformalize it. And I think that's for us that we, you know, that's really what I think uh, people want. That's what they come to us for with Bardo and with Bear in particular. I, I couldn't agree more. You know, having been to to Bear and experiencing um, that, it it opens the door for people to try something a little bit new as well. Uh-huh. Um, that that you know, it you, when you say demystifies and and kind of you relax a little bit, and all of a sudden you go in and and it makes it easy and inviting to try something that maybe you wouldn't no- normally try, um, and it's in a form that that is still recognizable and comfortable, but something that that creates an incredible you know delicious experience yeah and you know we're super relationship based um and i think as people begin to trust you more and that trust isn't just your server it's the it's everybody that touches you Mm -hmm. throughout the experience you know what i'm saying so um and even though they don't directly touch you that includes the kitchen Mm -hmm. and so you know what kind of menu do we open with versus where do we want to be in six and being smart about that you know what i'm saying so i mean we sold a lot of pizza when we opened up Pardo. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, and because people were like, they walked in, they were like, wow, this has got a marble countertop and it's, it's, it's <laughs> bright. And, <laughs> but they are playing nineties hip hop. So that's cool. <laughs> so I'll uh-huh. come back. And, and then next thing you know, um, they were like, well, maybe I'll try tag the squid ink tag the arena, you know, mm-hmm. cause I've never seen that before. And wow, that's really good. But we have great chefs. You should always trust, trust a great chef. Oh, <laughs> yes. you think you like mushrooms or whatever. Try it. <laughs> <laughs> I can attest to that. Uh, I mean, it, well, and you talked a little bit about Max and what a phenomenal chef he is. Yes. Uh, but, you know, just extremely talented uh, mm-hmm. but, and does a, a phenomenal job with curating some of that. And I, I mean, he's not the only one you have on your team. You've got some incredible people. But yes. you, when you put those people in place, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that later, mm-hmm. uh, and let them do their thing, it's amazing what happens. Talk a little bit more about, uh, you know, your people understanding the service industry and how you train them, um, not only to give great service, but but yeah, I've noticed that your people care almost as much as you do, um, which is, is tough to say as the, the owner and the managing partner of, of what's going on, to have your people embody that as well. How have you been able to do that? Um, 
you know, every restaurant we open, um, you know, it starts with our business core values and and uh, our managers are trained to manage to that and that's something i learned in from uh, uh, my mentor when i was working in the management consulting space and i was very fortunate um you know we had a 350 million dollar regional consulting company and the managing partner and i sat in an office this size um and which is what 10 by 10 and back to back and I heard every conversation he had and I heard um, you know all his philosophies and I heard, I heard every conference call and, and everything because I, he wanted people to be out on client site so he didn't want a big office fancy office and we certainly could have afforded it but um, but it was really interesting and, and, and what I learned from him was that you know you've got to they need to know the decision you're going to make you know prior to them coming and asking you mm -hmm. know they should be able to based on what you're business philosophy is based on what your value system is they should know right you don't don't leave anything to chance now there's uh -huh. business questions they're gonna have but in terms of culture in terms of how you handle situations you know there's a lot of black and white in business uh -huh. and so so we we kind of set that and we try to minimize uh any kind of drama that goes on within you know when you're in close quarters dealing with people um and uh and then you know we hire with three things in mind, um, and I, I, I talked about empathy before. I think like that's super important to me. Um, I think emotional intelligence is incredibly important, um, and I think intellectual curiosity. And those are the three things that you have to have to work for me. Um, and uh, and if you have those, we can work with you regardless of what level you're at. Mm -hmm. um, so can't train those things those are those are things, things. That, that you yeah. definitely have to yeah. have to have coming in we we talk about that at footers as well you know i can train somebody what what size tablecloth goes on on the five foot round That's i right. can train you you know how to sell the difference between you know the, the, the filet and the and the bear and the beef but i right. can't teach you how to you know smile how to you know understand what somebody else is is really wanting and, and yeah thinking. there's a there's a tactical aspect to what we do right mm -hmm. that's the service piece right and people confuse service with hospitality all the time you know that's, and yeah, they're, I, they're, I couldn't agree more very different and uh, you know so it, how people it, feel how people feel when they come in and how f people feel when they leave and how people feel when they go to a wedding that you guys are catering and how they feel when they're in their car driving home and talking about the experience that's hospitality you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that's what's influencing that so exactly it's not about how to fill the water glass it's right. <laughs> we we have a, an analogy we talk about and this this was you know a, a light bulb moment for me where we were at this event and it was ridiculously hot and you know the the server there and he's like you know he was so frustrated and he was a, a younger guy and he's like ah I just keep filling these water glasses up and they just keep drinking all the water <laughs> like <laughs> I'm like it, it dawned on me I'm like we have not instilled that th this young man's job for him really is about making sure these guests have a great experience not right. about filling a water glass right. and he was so focused on filling that water glass that he had lost sight of the fact that you know the, it was a hot room hot day people needed to stay hydrated like that's the goal that's what you need yeah to we're be here about. for them exactly <laughs> yeah. what do you think are the other lessons you've learned from being in the hospitality industry um i mean i that's a uh, boy, I, that's a whole other segment. Um, you know, you learn a lot about people. Um, I, I've I have a very optimistic view of hospitality. Um, I think it's the, the impact that you can have on people, on your community in general, uh, through hospitality. I think is 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 remarkable. Um, so I think if I were to answer that in one way, that would be it. So, um, and we can talk tons about that if you want to, but. Um, I think like 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 to me, um, I talked about tap being cause based, uh -huh. um, you know, and uh, uh, sort of responsible capitalism and things like that. I mean, I learned that um, that we can really, really, really make uh, a positive impact on our community, on individual people, on the world around us. You know, I mean, right. we we definitely drive. Uh, behavior as it pertains to uh, sustainability and sourcing and um, you know so yeah thank you for I'm looking account. forward to yeah getting yeah. into that in the se next segment absolutely that's what I was gonna say you took the words right from me we will be right back after these messages here on cobrt.com slash live stay with us we'll be right back 
Welcome back to Connect and Collaborate. I'm Alex Hopkins, your on-air producer. And as I said at the beginning of this show, we are here with Anthony Lombados. He is the owner of Footers Catering, and all week long we are talking hospitality. Um, his guest today is Juan Padro, who is the managing partner at many places. He's got many more coming up. <laughs> we just learned about those in the last segment. We're going to jump right back into our conversation. Yes, yes. We have to keep plugging his restaurants, though. So if you have not been to Highland Tap and Burger, Senior Bear, or Bardo, make sure you get down there um, and, and check it out. Or Sloan's Tap and Burger, too. If you live over in Sloan's Lake, there's one right there. Sweet. When's uh, Tech Center Tap and Burger opening? August. August. Yeah, August for that. Uh, July for uh, Morin. Morin, okay. So. Awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to try them out. Yeah. Uh, so one of the things that, that we talk a lot about, uh, and it's you know near and dear to my heart, is creating a great place to work. And, and uh -huh. we've had some great conversations uh, about how you um, how you build engagement and how you build a, a close knit team. Um, and so let's start about start with attracting people. I mean, you you, you touched on it a little bit in the first segment, but mm. with unemployment at historically low levels, especially here in Denver. Um, it, you mentioned people are looking to go to the top, but what are the other things that you feel like you've done that, that have made you successful in recruiting great people? Well, I think you have to have a reason for being in business. You know, mm -hmm. um, I don't mean to be so simple in that, but I mean, I don't know that it's any more complicated than that. Um, people need to believe in you and what you're doing, and, uh, th and they need to want to be a part of that. Um, you know, tap is more than just burgers and beers. You know, if you want to sell burgers and beers, you can go to Park Burger, you can go to Lark Burger, you can go to McDonald's. Uh -huh. You know, I think they're, they're all here at McDonald's these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, so I think, you know, for us, um, the amount of engagement we have with our community, um, the amount of engagement we have uh, nationally and, and also internationally, um, we are uh, super involved. Um, and a lot of different projects. And, um, you know, obviously this last year, Puerto Rico got hit with a hurricane, and mm -hmm. I'm half Puerto Rican, so... Um, How many times there. have you been down there? It's been 80 days since total since the hurricane I've, I've spent down there. So eight trips, um, and uh, some of the trips at the beginning... I was a first responder down there. Um, so some of the trips were just flying back and forth on private jets, and I want to say we made like 57 flights back and forth. Wow. Helping and, and, I mean, you told stories about yeah. what the situation was like and, and being down there before um, many other uh, aid and help was able to even get there. Right. It was difficult to get on and off the island, for sure. Um, you know, you would think you could just, um, you know, take a, take a boat over, but all the ports were closed, and uh, that was something called the Jones Act, um, and that's, you know, there's all kinds of politics around that, but uh, but in general, you just couldn't get on and off the island. And uh, so, uh, but we were bringing solar lights and water filtration, um, and uh, uh, I had an opportunity. Well, how it started was at Sloan's. We did a fundraiser, and uh, we raised a hundred and nine thousand bucks on a Tuesday night, That's selling cool. rice and beans and pork. That's impressive. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, we had a great community engagement, um, and then I was introduced. Uh, to this woman, Allison Thompson, by a common friend in Chicago, and Allison's in Miami, and uh, she's a, a world-renowned humanitarian. Uh, she, after 9-11, um, really dedicated her life to that, and she's been in Syria, Niger, and Haiti, um, you know, since then, uh, you know, which are the three most dangerous places in the world, and, uh, you know, solar lights are, are, are really kind of her thing. Um, and uh, and and our fundraiser at Sloan's was was uh, you know Colorado bringing light to Puerto Rico or shining mm -hmm. light on Puerto Rico I think we call it and uh, so my friend said hey I saw what you're doing I want to introduce you to Allison and um, uh, so she did and uh, Allison was like oh, that's awesome you raised that much money would you consider giving it to me <laughs> 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 and I was like sure and uh, so then. <coughs> She got involved with uh, two other groups, We Do Better and Global Empowerment Mission um, down there. So those three uh, small nonprofits, probably a total of about eight people um, in a warehouse in Miami. And uh, they, um, those guys set out to, uh, to really make an impact. And it was a pretty amazing thing. Allison called me up and she said, hey, we all realize that we don't know our way around the mountains and neither does anybody in Puerto Rico who lives in the city. Uh, but, 
your friend Amber told me your father lived in the mountains. Do you know them? And I said, as a matter of fact, I do know them really well. And she said, can you get down to Miami? So I flew down and rest is history. But um, <clears throat> you have to excuse me. Uh, we we saw some pretty gnarly stuff. Um, yeah. And uh, and then uh, we got some celebrity engagement. Uh, Bethany Frankel got, got involved with her Be Strong. And then it, the whole umbrella became Be Strong uh global mm -hmm. mission i think is what it was and uh and then you know she had uh some celebrity outreach and i remember a second day down there paris jackson flew down michael jackson's daughter we had to take her out to a school just to get some exposure to what we're doing um and then you know people like daddy yankee and benicio del toro and john leguizamo and then bill clinton came down in november uh with the group and um and uh when we when we closed our books um, unfortunately, I was not at that meeting, but um, they, uh, they're they doing the, a big case studies coming out now because on $425,000 in fundraising, we did 17.2 million pounds of aid. Wow. Uh, and that is the largest private humanitarian aid mission in U.S. history. Congratulations. Yeah. That's, That's phenomenal. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Puerto Rico, obviously, is something that's <coughs> near and dear to your heart. For sure. Know? And... Uh, but as long as I've known you, you've been involved with numerous organizations within mm -hmm. the community. How do you decide which ones to, to get involved with and uh, and get behind? Because I can imagine there's somebody always asking you for, for something. <laughs> yeah, every day, probably five or six times a day. Uh -huh. um, so there's different levels of engagement, right? Mm -hmm. First of all, um, I absolutely disagree with the sentiment that you can't help everybody. I think you can. Okay. So I think it's fine to give a ten dollar gift certificate to a kid who's trying to raise some money to, you know, buy cleats to play baseball. You know, sure, uh, that's fine. Um, but you know, when we're getting involved on uh, in terms of time and things like that, um, you know, for us, education is really important. Um, where Highland, Bardo, and Senior Bear are, you know, that's you know, gentrification is a hot topic in in Colorado, and uh, we saw. Um, you know, a coffee shop, um, make an unfortunate mistake in, in, uh, in Rhino and, and, yeah. uh, and they, they, you know, experience a lot of backlash from that. And so, and that backlash is coming from, you know, people are feeling pain, mm -hmm. feeling hurt and, uh, and they're feeling left out of the conversation. And, and so that's why, you know, TAP is such an important part of the community because it's a place where people can gather. Uh, they can talk about things. We've held community forums on gentrification uh, with Metro State and with guest uh, lectures and things like that. Um, and, you know, so I think th if you're investing in the schools uh, and, you're in, and you're lifting up and not worried about pushing people out, you know, we want diversity in our neighborhood. Right. You know, we're stronger with that. So for us, it's about like making sure that these Latino kids are, are, um, are, are, are in really good school systems so that they can graduate and have an opportunity to go to college mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and then come back to their community and help. Right, you know, so and be a um, be a productive member of it and and moving the whole neighborhood forward. Yeah, hundred percent. And uh, so that's really what our focus has been. Uh, we do a ton of work with uh, Sandoval, which is a dual language Montessori. Uh, there's Edison and Skinner and West Colfax and all those schools in, in North Denver. Um, uh, we work with all of them. Uh, Talk about how your employees get involved with mm -hmm. some of this. That is, you know, you obviously have a big heart, and it's stuff that, that uh, these are causes that you want to support. How do you involve your employees in some of the things that that you're doing? Um, so, in terms of the school stuff, that's where they get most involved, and that's just a uh, you know volunteering time, and and in some cases when we're doing fundraising, they're do donating their tips and things like that, um, which is a big deal when you're 22 years old trying to pay rent in Denver, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so, uh, so there's that piece of it. Um, and it's just like opening their eyes to things that they can do to help. Um, and, you know, we do access opportunity, uh, which is another educational foundation, which we take 15 kids each year in their sophomore year. Uh, we provide one-on-one -on -one tutoring, one-on-one -on -one test prep. Um, we do, um, 
Uh, your team does that? No, and this, gets is through, this is through Access Opportunities. Okay. So this it. is Susie okay. Hayes. She's just an incredible human being. Uh-huh. Uh, John Hayes, her husband, is the CEO of Ball Corp. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so I got involved in that through uh, Sean Barker, who's the uh, the controller for Ball. I actually married him and his wife. I was the officiant at their <laughs> wedding. And, uh, th- and that's how I got involved with Access Opportunity. And, and uh, we run the whole they, – they do a big event called Raise a Class and uh, it's at the ball hangar every year in March and uh, we run uh, the entire food program so we get all the different restaurants we manage all that we get a bunch of silent auction items we get some live auction items Um, I think this year in three hours we raised like 600 grand phenomenal and that goes to like I said one-on-one test prep one-on-one tutoring college counseling because if you're poor you don't think you can go to Harvard right but Harvard has all the money yeah. yeah, let's face it, right? <laughs> so you know, uh-huh. so let's let's make sure that they're applying to the right schools, getting the grants that they need that are they necessary. Take a lot the of right the first generation. Uh, it's been a hundred percent college placement uh, every class. Um, That's a outstanding. It really is. Mm-hmm. That's beautiful. Yeah, she's amazing, Susie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, our kids participate in that, um, mm-hmm. cooking, bartending, just being there. You know, uh, and we have a lot of relationships. Our, our restaurants are super popular. Um, we have a lot of athletes that come in. We have a lot of celebrities that come in, and and uh, we have good relationships with those people. And uh-huh. We've asked them for things, and they've given them. Uh, so we're able to participate there. Uh, ben Higgins, who was the bachelor, yeah. Uh, so he we auctioned a dinner off with him. I think it went for. 10,000 bucks for a dinner for four. <laughs> wow. Um, you know, uh, Carrie was on Top Chef this year. Uh-huh. I think we did. I think that also went for, man, I went for 8,000. She's going to cook at somebody's house. That's cool. Uh, so really cool, like, experiential things that we can contribute, you know, being in our industry. You know, our industry is a little bit sexy these days. So, Well, especially, uh, I mean, talk a little <laughs> bit about, let's let's transition to, to Carrie being on Top Chef and uh-huh. what that was. I, I mean, I'm a huge Top Chef fan, and we, you know, watch it religiously every week, um, and, and, she just did such an incredible job of, of um, you know, presenting herself, and and I thought she uh, she was phenomenal on the show. Yes. What, what kind of impact did that have on on your restaurant? Um, I think in general, um, you know, in terms of business and stuff. I mean, we saw a lot, we were pretty busy. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw a little bit of a spike in terms of like a first turn and things like that. Um, I think she represented us really well i think she represented colorado really well yeah you know i agree uh she's a really good person she works hard you know um so she's a partner in the business um when she actually got on top chef she was uh she was a line cook and uh, everybody else was a chef (laughs) and uh, blake (laughs) was actually the number two guy and max was the chef at bardo Uh and uh, blake of course got senior bear right and then carrie was naturally moving up to number two but um you know she didn't let that get in the way of her development you know, uh-huh. I think you need to talk a lot about Max with that and sure. uh, the mentorship he's been able to provide both her and Blake and um, helping those guys grow and learn and, uh, you know, add good technique to, to their cooking and they have great ideas, but, you know, it's like putting those into practice and, and I think that really came through on the show. Um, you know, you talked about... I. Unfortunately, I didn't get to watch the whole season, but uh, because I was in Puerto Rico working, there's no no TV down there. Uh, we still have but, a DVR. You can come over. <laughs> thanks. You're gonna invite me over. That's awesome. Um, but you know, uh, one of the shows I watched, uh, you know, the guys were giving her a little bit of grief. The other chefs were giving her a little bit of grief for her fancy toasts uh-huh. and things like that. But I think one of the things that Max always says, and I, I sent all of them, you know, before Senor Bear down to uh, Lima. Mexico City, Oaxaca, Tulum, right? And when they were in Lima, they went to Central, which is, you know, top five restaurant in the world. Virgilio Martinez, um, and uh, uh, it, it's impossible to get into. I've become, uh, you know, I communicate with him quite a bit, actually. Okay. Um, and uh, so we're talking online. I'm like, I got to get these guys in there. So finally, we got them a table in there, and they went and ate. And they thought it was, like, amazingly creative. But Max's philosophy is a little bit different. Like, that is a very, like, hey, this is what it's like to eat at every elevation in Peru, and it's crazy. And and that's, you know, they, they, wanna, they want you to be able to picture yourself in that. And it's a, that's what that experience is. But first and foremost for Max is it's got to taste good. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, and I think like, you know, 
going back to Carrie and, and her and her fancy toast and stuff like that. And she just saw some ingredients. She put them together because you know what, it tastes good. Yep. <laughs> and, uh, and and she won. And that's just great influence. You know, that's just a, a really good leadership on Max's part and really good, um, you know, on Carrie for uh, taking you know that kind of uh, uh instruction and things like that she's gotten better and better and better she's at the emmys right now oh wow yeah so she's cooking down there and wow. uh with and with blake and and uh oh, cool and blake is super you know he's amazing too at uh at senior bear you know of course yeah. that got three and a half stars from 5280 that's the highest that they've ever given and um and that's you know he's just done an, an incredible job he's uh he's amazing that's really cool mm-hmm. so you know you mentioned and, and you are one of the most well-connected people that I know. Um, it, it, talk a little bit about how you're able to do that because I think, you know, there's people that just know a lot of people and then there's the, there's people that genuinely, you have this quality that you make people feel special. Um, and so t- talk a little bit about how you're able to do that and, and you know, how that's translated to, to the success of the, the restaurants. Um, I don't really, that's a good question. Um, my parents have it to this day i'm 44 years old my parents have lived in the same house in massachusetts um and they live now half the year in puerto rico and, and half the year in mexico because they're uh-huh. retired um but uh they've never locked their door to their house yeah i'm speechless <laughs> for that. um and you know it's just i think it's one of those things where it's like um there's never any doubt that you're welcome mm-hmm you know, under any circumstances. Um, I think for me, that's probably it. Yeah. You know, I think people know, like, you know, when when uh, when Wolfie comes in after the Broncos lose, he knows that, you know, we're going to sit there and talk about the loss, you uh-huh. know. So we're going to talk about something else and, and have a good meal and, and have a good time, and, and uh, he's going to get a couple hours of uh, mental reprieve, you know. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, it's the same thing with, with the guys on the Nuggets and the Avs and stuff like that and, and all the Red Rocks people that come in, and, and, and you know, they know that they're not going to get bothered. Um, our staff is definitely, you know, we leave them alone. Uh-huh. Uh, and then there's the good thing that we have a couple. We have young staff. Frances McDormand came in, and she to Highland Tap, and uh-huh. she says, uh, she's like, hey, I need to make a reservation for four. And I'm I'm standing there, and I'm watching my hostess. And I'm just like, I want to watch what happens here. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so the host is like, okay, I need your cell phone number. And I was like, <laughs> and so she gives it to her. Literally gives her a cell phone number, and she leaves. And I said, do you know who that was? And she's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Great. <laughs> you know? So no idea, right? And, uh, you know, and, and uh, both of the Cohen brothers were in with her. And, and uh, you know, so her daughter was at DU and they rented a house in the Highlands and stuff. And we get, you know, I mean, we get time. It's incredible who's been into that place. Um, but... Um, but that's probably something that, that travels within that community. It does. And they understand that, There's, hey, this is a good place to go. You're not going to get that, you know, awe and, you know, everybody's just oogling over who's here and who's there. It's a very yeah. common thing that, that you've got the caliber of people coming in. Um, and it's just kind of a natural experience where they'll, they're able to come and enjoy a meal like you Yeah, you we have it. About. Right. And and I think that that absolutely gets around in that community. Um, you, you can hit my social media; you'll see very few, you'll see a couple, but right. you'll see very few pictures uh-huh. comparatively. Right? You know, and, for all and, the people that come into your restaurant. Yeah, so. and that's it's if 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 it's if it's on my social media, it's because they told me to put it on there. Mm-hmm. Like I would never put something on, you know, and they know that, you know. So like on my Instagram, you'll see McLovin. Uh, and you know you'll see if Nate. you're gonna have somebody on your Instagram McLovin is pr- is pretty up there. So, so Chris, Chris and I have become good friends. We actually text quite a bit, and, and uh, he's a Patriots fan. I'm a Patriots fan, so that's uh, gotten you in the door a lot. <laughs> well, it's gonna get you out of my door. <laughs> so I want to tell you something. A couple of years ago, when the Broncos won the Super Bowl and they beat the Patriots in the AFC Championship. A lot of the players would would come to Bardot um, mm-hmm. after the game. It was like Louis Vasquez and, and Wolf and Sylvester Williams and Omar Bolden and Malik Jackson and all those like all of them would come. Uh-huh. And then there was this thing that like my least favorite team in 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 all the sports other than the New York Yankees is the Denver Broncos. <laughs> 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 and I'm going to tell you why. 
from 1979 to 1999, they beat us every single <laughs> time. Okay, we didn't beat them once. Uh-huh. And so, um, yeah, I had uh, the scars from my childhood from the Broncos. <laughs> so uh, I've always had this this dislike for them. But obviously, I really love a lot of the players. They're really uh-huh. good guys. And um, so, what ended up happening was they knew I was a Patriots fan. And so there was a lot of back and forth and back and forth and, you know, little side bets and things like that. Like, not money, but, like, stakes and stuff uh-huh. like that. <laughs> so the bet for the AFC championship game <laughs> was that if the Broncos won, they were going to get to come in to the restaurant and they had something. I was going to let them plan something appropriate in the restaurant. And uh, they decided that they were all going to come. So that I, it, se- <laughs> it's, it's, it seemed like that because I, I want to say there's probably th- we actually turned away probably 15 or 20 we couldn't even fit them in, and uh, but but in the, there is a picture on my Instagram of it. And I had to stand in front of the Bardo sign with my Patriots hat, and they were all flipping me off. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so it was pretty. Uh-huh. It was it was it, it was all in good fun, right? So yeah. 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 So uh, you, you know, coming back to you, you've got some really really great people. Uh-huh. Um, but you know, we've talked about Carrie and Max and Blake, and mm-hmm. you know, we've gotten to know Emily, and um, mm-hmm. so, so many of your your people. Uh, you know, really appreciate what you're doing. You talked about people wanting to believe in something bigger than than what they are. What else have you done to to build that retention and that that community that everybody's really working together um, to do some really awesome work? I think in general, it's relationship building. You know, um, we, we I, you know, it's 24 hours in the day, and I like to always. I was just with my staff at Senior Bear, and I, I told them I, I use all 24 hours. You know, I mean, literally, like, I'm, like, if I'm in town, I'm at your disposal. I don't care if it's 3 in the morning and you need me, I'll get up. And I think they understand that. Um, and they rarely take advantage of it on certain occasions they've had to. But, um, but you know, um, I get, uh, you know, I go to coffee with them. I go to breakfast with them. I go to lunch with them. I hear, I want to get to know them. I want to understand who they are, what drives them. My mother was a teacher. Um, and... She was in the Worcester public school system, which is a really tough town in, mm-hmm. in, in Massachusetts. And uh, she was at Worcester Voc, which is a vocational school, and uh, really struggling for teachers and things like that. So when I was in college, I was a substitute teacher, so without a degree. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't figure out, you know, I'm like, you know, I'm a substitute teacher in computer science, and I could barely turn on. I, could, I, mean, I was still using a <laughs> word processor at the time. And uh, my mother's like, your job isn't, as a teacher isn't necessarily always to, um, to teach a subject or you know, make a student passionate about chemistry or math or whatever. It's to figure out what they're passionate about um, and like, basically like ignite that passion you know, and manage them through that passion. You know, and um, or teach them in that case, but now it's managing, and you know we've got really awesome kids. Hospitality is the cool; it is hands down the coolest industry. It's got mm-hmm. the coolest people, in my opinion. Um, and you know, maybe you don't have celebrities working in hospitality, but you've got um, you know you've got kids from the city and single parent homes and from other countries and fr- speak multiple languages and who you have travelers you have athletes you have you have everything mm-hmm. single moms you know people are doing some really interesting cool stuff one know? of the things i think most hospitality people have in common is being able to roll with the punches uh-huh yeah yeah that's and they're thi- yeah they're thick-skinned and stuff like that so i think you know getting to know them and, and instilling pride in them and what they're doing and having great relationships with them i mean i would say you know that's crucial for us i think that a uh, uh the nuance that you're talking about there, um, you're probably not giving yourself enough credit for, for that ability to be a mentor and to be a, a coach um, and at the same time give them the freedom to to, to fall on their face sometimes mm-hmm. and, and to not swoop in. And, and, well, that's and part of our it core values. Them. It's okay to make a mistake. Yeah. Accountability. Be accountable for it and move on. But mm-hmm. people thrive under that, that mm-hmm. opportunity when they know hey, it's okay if I fail once in a while because 
if you fail in the pursuit of awesomeness, it's going to be okay. That's right. I don't trust anybody that hasn't fallen on their face. I can tell you that much. <laughs> Juan, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for joining Thanks, us today. I appreciate you both. Yes, thank you. Yeah. And again, check out his uh, restaurants. We have Highland Tap and Burger. We got Senior Bear, Bardo, Sloan's Bur- Tap and Burger, mm-hmm. and also coming in July is Morin. Morin, and August is T- the uh, Bellevue Tap and Burger, DTC Tap and Burger. I guess we'll call it. There you go. <laughs> thank you so much uh, for this podcast and more check out cobrt.com slash radio thank you so much gentlemen it's been a pleasure thanks guys